reasons for uh, pallor is there is loss of this ability of the ox axons to uh, you know cause the total internal reflection and also there is a reduction in the capillary density. So, this is another very important sign which we call Kestenbaum sign. Kestenbaum sign is a clinical indicator of optic nerve damage and what exactly we do is that when we observe the optic disc, we need to look at the number of capillaries that, we, that can be counted on the optic disc surface. The normal number of capillaries is about 10 and less than 6 usually indicates optic atrophy. So, if we want to confirm a diagnosis of optic atrophy clinically, Kestenbaum sign has to be documented. In this context, we also need to know that greater than 12 usually means a hyperemic disc. So, less than 6 is an atrophic disc and greater than 12 is a hyperemic disc. The uh, correct figure is about 10 blood vessels or capillaries on the optic nerve head. So, the patterns of disc pallor is, is uh, described in, uh, in these photos. So, what we see here is a band shaped optic atrophy. So, this band that you are seeing, this band that you are seeing here is what we are talking about and this can usually occur due to contralateral damage to the optic nerve. So, uh, and this is uh, very specific whereas, a temporal pallor, uh, usually this is what you are seeing as a temporal pallor, this is the nasal side of the optic disc, this is temporal side. So, this temporal pallor is uh, seen typically in patients with optic neuritis or in patients with nutritional optic neuropathy. Segmental is a classical feature of non-arthritic optic neuropathy. So, here you also need to know other, other types of presentation. This is an ophthalmoscopic pattern. So, in ophthalmoscopy, you also need to know there are other types. One is primary optic atrophy. In primary optic atrophy, classically you will have a papery white description is a papery white or a chalky white, chalky white optic disc. So, disc will be white in color, uh, it will have well defined margins and this is one, this is the most important thing. Second thing is you can have secondary optic atrophy. Secondary optic atrophy can follow some other disease that has already been present in the eye. So, under this you can have papilledema, optic neuropathy or ischemic optic neuropathy, optic neuritis. This is optic neuritis or ischemic optic neuropathy. So, any of these can cause secondary optic atrophy and uh, patients who usually uh, with secondary optic atrophy, they will have a dirty disc or also called it will be a greyish color that is one. Then they can have sheathing of vessels in the peripapillary area. Then uh, they can have poorly defined margins, poorly defined margins on the optic disc. So, these are the uh, salient features of secondary optic atrophy. So, if when we are examining the patient, we need to observe for primary and secondary optic atrophy based on these signs. Then you have another thing called consecutive optic atrophy. Consecutive optic atrophy usually occurs following some significant retinal disease such as retinitis pigmentosa or retinitis pigmentosa is the commonest cause, but it can also occur following uh, excessive photocoagulation where the entire uh, choroid and retina has been destroyed or in patients who have some other form of uh, choroiditis itself where there is inflammation. So, all these can cause consecutive optic atrophy. The classical feature of uh, consecutive optic atrophy is a waxy pallor of the optic disc. This is a very important word. Waxy pallor of the optic disc usually indicates a consecutive optic atrophy. So, this is all the ophthalmo, uh, ophthalmological, ophthalmoscopic classification of optic atrophy. Now, in the pathogenesis, you need to know that they can be, this is what I have just shown you now, primary, secondary and consecutive. So, in primary, there will usually be no prior swelling, ok. There is just a, it is just a previous uh, almost an, you know patient may have other CNS signs, but they will not have typical ocular swelling or inflammation. And here the most common cause is compression by tumors or aneurysm. This is the most important cause. Whereas in a patient with secondary optic, optic neuritis is not the most common cause here. It is usually a compressive op by tumors. Whereas in secondary optic atrophy, what you will see is a long standing swelling of the optic nerve head has already been present in the patient. So, here it occurs in patients with chronic papilledema, ischemic optic neuropathy or papillitis. Now, it is important for us to understand these words. Papilledema means when there is disc edema due to increased intracranial pressure. So, the word papilledema is disc edema due to increased intracranial pressure. 
Okay, so in these patients, the eye or uh, will have a long-standing edema that can, and the final stages, it can result in optic atrophy. Papilledema itself is is uh, distinguished into early papilledema, established papilledema, chronic papilledema, and atrophic stage. So the last stage is what we see: this edema, secondary optic atrophy. Ischemic optic neuropathy, like I just mentioned to you, is there is some problem with the circulation of uh, blood to the optic nerve head, and uh, this can occur in uh, patients with certain risk factors. Uh, one of the most common associations of anterior ischemic optic neuropathy is giant cell arthritis and papillitis. Papillitis means inflammation. Papillitis, uh, we can have optic neuritis, retrobulbar neuritis. These are all the common causes of uh, secondary optic atrophy. Consecutive means when there are diseases of the inner retina or the blood supply. So, the commonest cause is retinitis pigmentosa when there is extensive photocoagulation, panretinal photocoagulation or sometimes retinal vascular occlusions or even in severe choroiditis all this can cause all this can cause uh, say, uh, consecutive optic atrophy 